hopefully that this all works well. The students will have the access and I, if we upload it to a, to a YouTube channel, then I will let you know so that you can share with the others. Okay, so now this is being recorded. Uh, so welcome to the first Technology Innovation Management Speaker Series uh, that grew out of the Technology Strategy and Open Innovation courses. Today we're pleased to have uh, Ben uh, Bilski, who is the uh, founder and uh, CEO of NAGA, uh, a company that intends to revolutionize access to financial markets. Uh, and Ben, you can then correct me once you uh, go into the presentation mode. Uh, this presentation uh, is, has been made possible through the connections with the Ministry of Programming to whom I am uh, now saying my gratitude. And uh, the idea of this uh, webinar is uh, that either you speak for 45 minutes and then we have Q and A's or uh, people can interrupt you while you're talking. I mean, Ben, it's up to you. You've been... Uh... I, I think I prefer um, to uh, present. Um, it's a mix of the company history and, and learnings and then I think it's perfect to have a Q and A after. So 45 plus 15, is that so? Yeah. Or as uh, up to 45 minutes and then 15 minutes Q&A. That is very good. Uh, so how the questions are going to be asked through the chat. Uh, is that okay with you, uh, Ben? Absolutely. Yes, yes, sure. Okay. So very good. Ben, the floor is yours. I'm going to mute myself and stop the video so that you can uh, do your talk. Okay, perfect. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for inviting me, obviously. And uh, yes, it's very important to mention our connections. So um, I've been working closely with, a, with some friends of mine who built up a very successful technology group as well, besides us. Um, and that's why I have the pleasure to speak here. So I will talk about Naga. Um, the structure of the presentation uh, is to tell tell you some, a bit about me, of, of course. So why am I here? Why am I speaking? What value can I give you? So I always talk about proof of concept. If I'm a weak person, I should not teach anyone. If I'm a strong person, I can share something. So this is why I will start with myself. Um, then I will talk about our company history, the concept, um, what Naga really is, why we started it as a, as a fintech company, um, my learnings, and some examples how we actually give our mission and vision statement realness, so how we really approached it. So about me, um, I am um, 31 years old. I was born and raised in Germany. I have Polish roots. So um, I actually, that's why my name is Benjamin Bilski. My first um, startup that I made, I was 15 years old. So I was quite, quite early. Um, it was buying and selling MP3 players, maybe some of you remember there were MP3 players that had a USB stick in the end. So I was selling it um, up to seven digit amounts when I was 15, 16 on eBay. And I was buying and selling them like people do now with drop shipping, um, buying on AliExpress and selling it in, uh, you know, with Shopify. Uh, we had it back then a bit more manual, uh, finding it in, in Asian shops and then selling, reselling. So this was my first touch point and I, I entered e-commerce in 2000. And uh, for 2003. Um, in parallel, I was a swimmer. So um, I was attending uh, European championships and worlds. And uh, also I won some medals, was a, was a German champion in swimming. Um, was a very uh, important time for me as a person. So I also learned a lot about hard working and discipline, which I feel is very important whenever you want to do something in the technology space. And especially if you want to start your own company and be an entrepreneur. Um, I also studied, so after I quit my swimming career quite early, because I'm very honest always, I wanted to have some return, okay, so it was very nice to, to be um, doing sports so intensively, but in the end, I was not a soccer player, so I couldn't live from it, um, so I wanted to use my talents um, or try it, I had the assumption that I'm talented <laughs> in, in business, yeah, after I had this experience with selling the MP3 players. Um, so I studied, I studied in, uh, in, in Germany, I studied in the Netherlands, in, in the US, and I uh, ended it with a Master of Science from the European Business School um, in Germany. So, and then um, I always kind of had the passion to do something in, uh, in mobile, web development, etc. 
So it was quite, quite important for me to go into the space of technology because when you come from e-commerce, you have touch point with technology, but technology is a given, but you don't go even further. So um, it goes on. Um, after, after I basically um, started selling MP3 players, I also founded, when I stopped swimming, my own um, fishing store. So I was uh, building up an e-commerce business for fishing equipment, which obviously is not so related to, uh, to uh, whatever I was doing before. But, um, oh, sorry, I need to, I need to, anyways. So, um, but here I learned a bit to scale. So what it means to buy, sell um, goods online, even more on an European scale. And uh, I had, I had uh, also the, the great opportunity to sell my business. So after two years um, in and building up one of the biggest e-commerce shops uh, for fishing equipment in German speaking area, I sold the company. 2012, 2013, 14, and um, these years were basically um, very much influenced by trying things out. Okay, so it's very important because I will tell you a lot of how I see entrepreneurship and especially in these times. You can have success, obviously, but if you stop um, or if you say, I will be always successful, <laughs> life will teach you other ways. So I was, I was actually using the money that I got from my, from my first venture when I sold it to start a social network for dog owners. It failed massively. Um, also, I started um, a price comparison engine for old uh, used books where you can sell them at the highest price. It failed massively. Um, and then I started a Tinder for um, uh, clothes or fashion where you could swipe instead of people, you could swipe um, fashion items, right? So I was going a bit crazy in terms of, you know, from a social uh, network for dog owners to price comparison to a mobile app for, you know, with a great UI. Um, I burned a lot of cash, but I definitely learned something. And I learned a lot, which helps me today, this technology, how technology works. If you want to do it in the space of, um, of technology, starting businesses and innovation, you need to understand technology. It's my deep uh, understanding and feeling about it. So um, that's also the foundation of the company we're talking today because my, there was one a person who wanted to invest in my fashion Tinder, yeah, but he said, that, you know what, this is too small. This is too, you know, gamified, do it for finance. So we basically started a company called Swipe Stocks. And as the name says, you could swipe for stocks. So you could swipe for um, trades and investments instead of people or fashion. Uh, so this was the foundation for, for Naga. And I am going so much into detail about it because I wanted to tell you the story how I ac actually entered financial technology. So coming from e-commerce, trying innovative concepts, and then entering the old traditional investment world. We're talking about Forex trading, CFD, stock trading. It's quite complex, okay? So, uh, but since 2014-15, my mission and my passion is basically disrupting the financial industry. So I'm very much um, interested in everything around tech blockchain, obviously, because we're also in the space, space in digital strategies. Um, my, my so far biggest achievements, um, so I sold my company, um, I did an IPO with Naga, so we took it public, and I will talk about this as well. So if you took a, take a company public uh, within two years, um, in Germany, it's quite something, it's very rare. And we were one of the fastest IPOs in the last 20 years in, in Germany. We raised over 50 million with a partner company and an ICO. So we raised, uh, um, so we, we sold a coin called the Naga coin, which is an integral part of our platform. We'll also talk about it. Um, I also was put on the Forbes 30 under 30 list in technology because people thought it's quite uh, good what I did. But yeah, for, for me and the team was perfect. And yeah, my achievement as well as being the, the CEO of the company today. Okay, so that's about me. What I learned, what I believe and what I don't believe in, okay? So I'm not a banker or broker, guys. So I'm like, uh, I'm really someone, someone from, from starting doing things, um, starting to innovate, starting to change, starting to make money, obviously, as well. Um, I do not believe in centralization. I believe in the open space, in open source, um, in, in ever-changing environments. 
I believe in user experience a lot. Um, if you, I think, and I hope you will visit Naga after after my presentation, you will see it's all about the experience uh, of, of experience in finance. Um, and obviously, I like the concept of blockchain. Uh, a lot of people do it. A lot of people talk about it. I just like the concept, how it's being set up, and I think it's obviously the future in terms of the concept. So. Naga. Naga, you have to imagine it's like a LinkedIn for stock trading okay, or investing. Whenever you want to buy stocks at the moment, you usually face uh, a situation that is like this. So, you know, maybe Beavis and Butthead, okay? And uh, Beavis says like, okay, man, I heard Apple is going strong tomorrow. And then uh, Butthead says like, okay, dude, let me just buy some stocks. Okay, if you want to buy stocks or if you were to buy stocks, you would see this. What is it? I mean, this is the financial industry when it comes to trading and investing. It's a Bloomberg terminal or it's, I don't know, it's, it's charts. Who does, I mean, who understands that? In times of Instagram and TikTok, where everything is snappy, where everything is mobile, how do you want to invest into the financial markets looking at this, right? So um, this was my starting point, we're talking to 14 to 15, right? And um, that's why here we uh, started Swipe Stocks in 2015. This is the company stories. We set it up with a mission to make trading easier, okay? To make trading also accessible to everyone around the globe. Because a lot of people have to be banked, they have to have bank accounts, they have to run KYC, and so on and so on, to be even eligible to invest into the financial markets. And uh, we believe that we can solve it by a, a more gamified user experience, but also with the power of a good infrastructure, licenses, etc. So we started here in 2000. And, um, and 15. Then uh, six, seven months later, we already uh, locked in an investment with our concept. So you see the UI was quite funny. So it looked, it's like, it was like a Tinder feed, but you could just dislike and like and jump from stock trading idea to stock trading idea. In this case, Forex, for example. And the good thing, you could just copy um, the trade. So this was the basic concept, okay? Someone smart is trading in the platform and people who are newbies or who just want to you know copy different trading strategies they would choose between good and bad trades look at the statistics of trade and just copy with this one we received an investment from one of the oldest private banks in germany in 2016 which showed actually that a quite old institution and a financial institution like uh, the bank they also thought to be innovative but they wanted more going into m a or acqui hiring etc and they just bought a stake in Naga back then. And um, also we won an award back then with a, with a concept in 2016 being one of the most innovative solutions for the trading space. Then um, we're talking about March 2017, through our banking um, uh, investment from the, from the bank, we also got into touch with Fuzun. Fuzun is a Chinese conglomerate managing over 300 billion in assets. And they were also in, uh, very much convinced of the concept by simplifying investing. So we landed a $14 million A round back then in 17, which was in that year, one of the biggest uh, in Europe. Uh, so it was quite also showing us that we are on the, the right track as a company and as a concept. Um, and also, also like I learned what it means to deal with institutional investors or big investors and conglomerates. It's quite painful, but also very benefiting. So beneficial. Um, yeah, and then the IPO. So an IPO is something special, right? I mean, you usually you, you build up your company, you have a growth story, um, and then you float it on the market and you let the public um, participants basically trade your stock. It's a, it's a big thing. It's a huge thing. Our IPO was extremely fast. I mean, if you look at it in 2015 in October, we just started the company. And after 21 months, we, um, we just went public. So we went really, it, it was a sprint. It was a huge experience and it definitely came with pros and cons, which I will talk about as well. But um, yeah, we, we, we listed the company, we started at 260, we closed the trading at 650. Um, the company by end of the year in 2017 was worth 240 million euros. So after two years of the foundation, this was a quite huge amount. Um, and yeah, we had all the tailwind to say, okay, we are, we are well-funded, we are publicly listed, 
let's push. Okay, so we really were bullish. And then um, in, uh, in December 2017, so you see our speed and the timeline is very short. Yeah? So after we did the IPO, we turned our head into the crypto space because maybe some of you remember in 2017, there was this crypto boom. Okay, so uh, Bitcoin reached 20K end of the year. Um, ICOs came up like crazy left and right. It was like, it was like the gold rush for digital tokens. So because we had the technology, we had the momentum and we had the concept for it, we also launched an ICO, which was actually in Europe, one of the largest ICOs. And in terms of people who participated, we had 63,000 investors, uh, was under the top five ICOs worldwide. And um, what, it, what it basically um, meant for, uh, for, for Naga and the coin, for the purpose for the coin was to, um, or is still, to use a cryptocurrency without having a bank account to enter the financial markets. And this is exactly what we, in the beginning, when we founded the company, wanted, right? So you have underbanked people living, for example, in, uh, in South America, in Africa, in Southeast Asia. They skip banking, but they have, for example, access to digital tokens um, or crypto, which was very big, especially in Latin back then, in 1716. And they can fund their trading accounts or their, their, their trading um, terminals with us, with crypto and invest via crypto and buy Apple stocks. So you see the, the whole connection from offline getting crypto, going online, sending it to a trading platform and participating in the global financial market. Um, what we did was unprecedented in, in, in terms of a concept. And the Naga coin was our utility for this one. So you bought Naga coins, so you buy and you instantly invest or copy other traders in Naga. And to fulfill this whole thing and the whole mission, uh, this was again the, the Forbes thing. Um, and then the, uh, to fulfill this, um, we had to have a wallet as well. So we developed a native wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet inside Naga to meet uh, the, the demand to basically be able to not only store in Naga coins, but Bitcoin, uh, USDT, Ethereum. So we fully went into being from an observer of crypto, issuing a token to a maker in, in crypto. Obviously, we didn't have the large, uh, like huge track record, but um, we were on it to use our experience of building retail focused technology and just do it. So after the wallet, we also added an own cryptocurrency exchange. This was the next logical step. So in a nutshell, you have a social network for investing, which I will show you in detail after I finish the presentation and before we start the Q&A, that allows you to trade financial assets, Forex, stock, CPs, plus you can use cryptocurrency, store it, buy it, and invest into the whole thing. So I think based on what we have, you won't find another platform that, that has it all. And I'm not saying this in order to pitch, but I'm saying this in order to understand that we were doing a lot of things in terms of product development and, and uh, focusing on creating like a system, like a financial system, a financial system. This is kind of uh, what we wanted, okay? Um, so today we, we are, as I said, listed. We are fully, um, I would consider as a complete tech company. However, we own financial licenses. So this is also important if you, if you do something in that space, that you have to also consider the regulatory environment and the frameworks. So it's not only about nice user experience, nice applications, but then you have a quite large overhead when it comes to compliance, corporate governance, um, regulatory frameworks, as I said. Um, so it's quite something at some stage, especially in financial technology. It's not only, it's not only that you stay a front-end app or just a funny concept it goes deeper and then you have to be serious and it's painful <laughs> because it's not fun sometimes so we have over 600,000 registered traders 40 products across investing and uh, one of the fastest growing trading platforms in Europe sorry there's a typo um, and I think in the, within the next three years um, you will see Naga becoming uh, the market leader in this uh, financial services um, ranging from from like personal banking and investing because we also offer uh, personal finance solutions and yes we are very um let's say ambitious but after what we experienced i think um it will definitely be something that we want to 
one ant sheet. But it was not always easy, okay? <laughs> and this is where I want to kick in with the learnings and especially I would have appreciated if somebody told me these things a bit before, uh, especially based on real experience. So look at the timeline again here. 2015 to 17, we are like completely in growth euphoria, okay? So everything works. People look at Naga and say like, they just started, they raised cash, they raised more cash, they went IPO, they did an ICO, and suddenly boom, from, from nothing to someone, yeah? Or like something, I would say, in this space. So we have suddenly 200 million euros worth, we have 200 employees, uh, and raised over 80 million in, in approximately 22 months. So high speed, okay? High growth pace and, and, and food speed. So this was great. But 2018, I said, bad awakening. So if you're so much about innovation and uh, product and, you know, disrupting everything, you sometimes forget uh, what, how, to, how to run the business and what business is actually about. So as the good old merchant said, if your costs are higher than your revenue, you have a problem, right? So in our case, we were focusing a lot on R&D as a company and I personally as well. So I was driving it um, together back then with my co-founder, Kusio. Uh, cost bloated a lot. Then we went fully into the crypto crash. So 17, 18, you raise a lot of capital in, in crypto and suddenly the crypto space is just crashing. I mean, Bitcoin from 20K to 3K, Ethereum 1,100 to 100, 90% drop. Our coin went fully down. Our stock went down. So you lost, I mean, we lost the focus and we were all over the place with too many projects, too many products. So 2019, is it game over? This is the big question. So the cost literally exploded. The revenue crashed and we had to change the management. So we had to reshuffle a lot of things, change the teams, fire hundreds of people, rehire, relocate and restructure. So for me, it was really a major, like I matured a lot as an entrepreneur because you suddenly end up having this great, you know, potential and this great story but you realize that if you don't have the numbers and if you don't have the facts, it's worthless. So this is where I found myself um, from being high paced into hitting really rock bottom and saying, okay, what's next? So, but we took on the challenge. Um, it was exactly one year ago and I will always be very open about it because it's, it's something like I portray here. It's a roller coaster when you start companies, especially in the financial technology space, but in general, if you start your own company, you have to be ready for everything. It can be daylight today and it can be super dark tomorrow. Okay. So it's, it is what it is. I mean, if you sign up for it, you have to be ready. Um, and um, as of today, I'm super happy to talk about because obviously we restructured, we went back to our values in terms of what we want to achieve with this platform who actually we're talking to. So it's the customer, it's not us, it's not what we like to see, it's like what the customer wants. Um, you suddenly take more care of your cost structure, etc. So now in this year, um, and this is where we are now, we are stronger than ever as a company. Um, and it also showed in our, our recent results. So basically from restructuring, okay, and I like to always show you numbers as well, um, because it's, it's relevant to, to see growth. So from, basically having in one quarter just the revenue of 600,000 euros um, and a cost of 3.5, which ends up with losing 3 million in cash. I mean, you work, you have all of this, um, you're so fired up, but actually, you know, every day that I wake up, I'm running a loss making company. I'm losing money with my work. It's worth it. So like these things come up and you have to go through that. Um, and we had a really a big boost because we were focused, because we knew what we have, and we restructured it as a company. So you really matured during the process. And I think it happens all over again, but over time you will find out that um, it's very important to be super focused on what your goal is. So today we had, we just reported a record revenue of 7 million in a quarter uh, with 3.4 million EBITDA and the net profit as well of 2 million. So actually, um, we are profitable fintech. You don't, you, you don't see a lot of profitable fintechs. Fintechs raise a lot of capital, um, they burn a lot of capital. I know the story, as you've seen. So we raised a lot of money, but we burned a lot of money, and uh, we have our learnings. 
So the super keys, as I, as I call them, the, the super key takeaways um, from this story you now, from, from this Naga story for you, um, based on my experience, if you start companies, if you are teaming up, if you do something in that space, um, if you want to become an entrepreneur of the new era, think long term. It's, it's a bold statement, but no matter what agreements you make, no matter what you, what you do, never be short-term greedy, okay? Because short-term greed will mess up the system, yeah? So think in, in time spans. I know that no one, I mean, most of the people are not patient uh, these days, but you have to do five to seven years horizons at least, okay? So if you, you want to go in it, go all in. Don't do two or three things on the side. Go full, term, uh, full, full and long term. Um, know with whom you partner up, it's very important. I had made very bad experiences as well. Things always start nice and well and motivated and money we will share and blah, 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 blah. But it was always a bit different if you are, especially if you are successful, especially if you have success or if you fail. And this is also very important in terms of the journey of building your own company. Um, and building something in an innovative area, success and failure always comes together. And in these times, you always know with whom you partnered, and then you know if your agreements that you make, no matter what nature, are standing uh, strong in these times. Because in success, you have euphoria, people are rational. In failure, you have depression, you're not rational. So that's what my learning was. Be concerned if you outperform. And basically be bullish if you fail, okay? Because failure is always an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, it's a lot of entrepreneurs say that, a lot of motivational coaches say that, whatever, I don't know. I'm not one of those, but I can just tell you that failing is something that makes you rethink and it's very important. Um, yeah, if your revenue are uh, bigger than your cost, everything is fine, else is wrong, yeah? So whatever you do, whatever, how you pitch, whatever, people will always pinpoint you that you don't make money. Okay. It's, it's perfectly fine for some time, but if you pitch, 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 and over pitch, you know, then sometimes people will ask you, and where's the money? I mean, no money, no honey, they will say, and uh, why are you still pitching me? Can you just make it work? I mean, at some stage, you will really, you know, grind on the patience of your investors or, or shareholders, stakeholders, etc. cetera. Um, and I always say profit sets you free. Don't rely on external funds too much. Everything can happen. I mean, you see it with coronavirus now. A lot of companies were raising, preparing, and then suddenly, boom, that's it. Round canceled and what? I mean, if you, if you are self-sustaining and if you have the power by yourself, you just, you know, you can stay cool in any critical situation. So it's very important to focus on internals. And high growth ambitions require high pace and full dedication. Else, you should not do this. I mean, I tell you, um, it's, it's, it's full-time, hardcore. Um, it's super exciting. You will see things that you never saw in your life before. People will see it differently, etc. You can become a very respected person, but you can also be, become someone who's really, you know, not taken serious. So there's a fine line. Uh, so that's very important to understand that. Whatever you do in that space, whatever you do, in, uh, in, in young companies, no matter if you're just a team member, and I don't say just, but if you're a team member, or if you're the project starter, co-owner, whatever, this space is high-paced, and people are, yeah, they sometimes, people are made for this, and some of them are just don't, not made for it. Okay. Um, also, something that I learned in, in our case, and especially in times of globalization, and you see, we are connected now via Zoom, we're fully digital. Um, you can do business everywhere. I mean, you can start it in, on your own soil, but, but especially in financial technology, and I'm talking about my experiences, you can really do it everywhere, okay? So you can go online, you sell online, you stay online. From day one, Naga was a remote work company. Obviously, we have offices because some departments, especially when it's about regulation, finance, um, or, or uh, infrastructure in general that you have to have people meeting each other. But most of the time, be aware you can sell online, you can do things online. So 
what is very important is that you are local. If you don't have a local expert, whenever you scale out of the market, it will be very hard. Because if you think about your own situation when you are raised, for example, you guys are in Portugal, I was in Germany or Poland or now in Cyprus, every country has its own mental, right? They have their own details, have their own wording for the same term. And if you sell things, you have to have localization. It means like everything you do, it has to fit with the market needs. So every, every country that you launch is basically a project and a business on its own. It needs budget, it needs an own team. You should never think that you can just manage everything from a central point. You have to decentralize it and then uh, get it together. You can do it to a specific scale, but uh, it's, it's a problem. And in the financial technology space, you can use regulation um, in your favor as well. So there's sort of regular arbitrage. You can use licenses or you can uh, also save yourself or yourself when, for example, there are regulatory changes in specific so you diversify. So this is something that, that also was one of the keys that I learned. And um, FinTech disruption, I will come to the pro product a bit more because um, yeah, I'm talking a lot about theory, but I'm a full practical person. Um, and in times of TikTok guys and Instagram, everything is snappy, everything is fast, and we are completely spoiled by the tech billions, okay? Because these companies are massive. These companies invest a billion in servers, a billion in product. They hire 20,000 people for things that you would never, you would ask yourself, what? I didn't know that you need, for example, like Facebook hired not 10,000 people for the product. You ask yourself, what? 10,000 people? I mean, you can, you can start an airline with that one, right? But, but they're working on nuances and small details that spoil the customer. So users are used to things instant. Um, I, I would say instant gratification. So you tap on it and you get it back. You tap on it, you get it back. You swipe, everything has to load in seconds. And in finance, it's the same. I mean, people are used to snappy, fast interfaces. You have to bring it um, to, the, to the product in any vertical. If it's food, fashion, finance, it doesn't matter. Okay? And I believe that the only edge you have in these times is making things sexy via the user experience. So that's my, my strong belief. Especially you have opportunities in, in, in old fashioned markets and in old industries, which are, you know, there forever. Okay. But you can do a lot of things. You can automate and make the user experience better. Don't over the engineer, obviously listen to the customer. Um, that's, that's very important because in the end, everything is quite subjective. You build it, you start it because you think it's the best, but in some states you need to involve the customer for sure. Uh, run surveys, um, from the very, very early start, I would do it totally different. I was like too much focused on our own visions and rather than listening to the customers. And I find myself now implementing things that people asked me two or three years ago. And I'm like, okay, they were right. And uh, obviously that's also very important, never to challenge the status quo. Whatever you do in your business, it's not only about the product, but whatever you do, whatever set up, whatever, whatever, whomever you work, reassess every six months in cycles. You have to, you have to be always cautious if there are any changes and if you should make any changes. Don't take things for granted, okay? Things are changing, things are evolving. The market into, uh, like environment changes. You should never stay static because then you become one of the ones that will be disrupted, yeah? This is also something important because if you stay too long on the, on the one, let's say, a level, there will be someone and you see like, ah, they didn't change anything for two years. This is the worst thing that somebody could tell uh, about our product. They would say, ah, oh, Naga didn't change anything for two years. And I would say like, okay, I cannot call myself any more innovative. That's also quite important. Yeah, so I give you some examples how we disrupted the space in terms of, let's say, our product ideas, and I will then move on and show it how it looks in action. So again, we're talking about the social network, right? Social network, people communicate, share, but where's a trading platform integrated so you can go and really trade. And uh, we wanted to go a bit beyond. So for example, we had ideas like, um, you know, we were the first ones to allow um, stock trading accounts with cryptocurrencies. We structured own financial products around gaming items. So it didn't work in the end very well, but it was a nice idea. So we were using a price feed from uh, Counter-Strike, for example, and we're pulling the data. And, uh, you know, we had a bid and ask price and a chart, and then you could buy, just like you would buy Apple or Tesla, you would buy a Desert Eagle 
conspiracy item. You could buy five of the guns, and if the price would be rising or falling on the on the gaming markets in Counter Strike, you would benefit. So it was quite quite exciting. Also, um, we were having a in-game item exchange, so you could basically sell crypto or sell your items and receive crypto. It was also one of the first. And uh, we launched our own robo advisor based on crypto, so you could give your own robo AI a Bitcoin and he would invest across all our platform fully automatically. Um, and we were one of the first fintechs that offered uh, Ethereum-based, Bitcoin-based, and Naga coin-based trading accounts. So instead of seeing dollars or euros, whatever, in your trading account, you would see everything in Bitcoin, everything in Naga coin. So it showed that we really, this is 2018, yeah, where we went crazy with the products. Uh, now it's good to have it, but uh, it was it's quite, a, quite a ride. And um, then we also started something like WhatsApp or Viber or Telegram, you call it. Um, you, can, you can chat and trade. So it's like a messenger where people can talk about the US markets, the German markets, and you could trade and invest. Right off the chat, we call it the Naga Messenger. And it's used now quite nicely. Also, where we went in um, into real stocks because you know we started with uh, like CFDs, cryptocurrencies, um, virtual stocks, yeah, which is a CFD actually, uh, forex ETFs. We launched a real stock trading commission free, so you can buy real stocks without paying anything. Um, this was also one part. And signals very important as well as a product. I will show you how it works. It works like Instagram stories. And this is also showing how we think. So, you know, people are watching stories on Instagram. These stories disappear. Um, everyone does it. Millions of users. But traders, they're, used, they're, they're watching uh, trading ideas and they're called so-called signals. Okay? So somebody's sending out a signal and say, buy, I don't know, Apple at 200 and sell at 250, something like this, or whatever it is now. So, um, and we actually took the concept of Instagram with the stories but instead of a story, you see a trade. You see a disappearing trading idea after 24 hours, which you can copy, um, and it's right um, in front of you. So again, you take concepts from apps that have these tech billions, as I say, and you try to put it in the product of your own vertical, in our case, finance. Um, and Naga Business, obviously we, we are pivoting a bit. Pivoting means you're changing the direction of the, of the sales funnels and the sales flow as a company from uh, only retail clients, so only focusing people um, that are searching for, for trading solutions to more people who are managing already trading networks or investing networks. And we sell Naga as a tool, so we call it Naga Business. It's a bit like um, like Facebook for Business, Business Manager, Instagram uh, has also the integration with Facebook Business. LinkedIn has a lot of professional solutions. So at some stage, you build so much technology and so much innovation that you create a product that some of the um, entrepreneurs around maybe a specific area would like to use for themselves. And this is one of our big growth factors at the moment. So it's kind of like you pivot, yeah, so you change. So this is basically, first of all, my presentation. And obviously we will go a bit in, uh, in what I was building, yeah. So Safari so feedback, I'll just cancel this one. And then let's go to the feed here. So I hope you can see it. Um, so I had a quite extensive talk here. Um, about everything that we built and did, and this is our platform, okay? So this is the social network for stock trading or for investing and, um, and how we build it and why we spent over 20 million euros into such a platform. Um, and you can see, um, I will just walk you through, it's, it's basically, you have your own profile, you can post things on the feed, you can give it some emotions, but the emotions are based on stock investing and trading. So you feel bullish, you feel bearish, you know, if you're angry, you feel nervous, and uh, you can post statuses, you can give it some emotions here. Um, you can see the, the signals, okay? So there are people sharing a trade, and you can directly invest with one tap. You can read an analysis if you want. You can see um, real-time transactions from people now trading in the platform, which are real trades with real money. Um, there's some traffic and you see obviously people sharing knowledge, sharing their trades. 
So it's all about money and investing, okay? Building, building audience and gaining also people who copy you. Like, like this guy, he said, I want to say thanks for my first copier. So he just joined and he gets people copying his traits and he's sharing how, how happy is, he is about it. And it's quite international. You see, you have people from Hungary, um, you have people from the United Kingdom and so on, Spain, Italy, etc. So it's all across the, the board. Yeah. So this is basically the, the, the feed and this is the heart of the platform where people um, are basically sharing and coming together. Then we have um, the top traders. And this is also something quite impressive after some time. And what I've seen when we developed it because I didn't expect it to be so successful. So people who are in the platform, they are sharing their trades. So you can see the so-called top trader leaderboard, we call it. And you see the best people making money in, in one month. So here we have a user who made 260,000 in a month, 88,000, 70,000. You see he is being copied by 400 people. So this is the concept that that makes Naga what it is today. So from this whole trading environment with the social network, you have the feature that you can benefit from other people's knowledge. And again, in the beginning of the presentation, I said, I'm all about transparency and decentralization. It's not just a pitch, um, but it's more of, you know, there's a concept around it. So if we have such a guy here, he shares his trades, I can auto copy him now. I can see he's managing over $6 million in the platform. Um, he's investing 13K per trade and I can um, copy him uh, relative to his uh, position. So if he puts 13, then I can say 10% would be 1,300. So whenever he opens something, I made 10% of it. Um, or we have an investment amount, you always say, I want to follow someone of the base investment. And this is, this is the most popular feature. That's why I'm talking a bit longer about it because people come to the platform and they want to invest and, and maybe they don't have the knowledge because I said in the presentation as well, there's this big charts, there's this, um, comes UI and people don't understand what's going on. But in Naga, it's kind of friendly, you know, it starts with a feed, people sharing, it reminds you of Facebook, LinkedIn, and then you can really just copy with one tap the best traders here. And uh, you can also check them out. So you see basically what, uh, how they perform, their statistics, then what they trade, how they trade, their strategies, and their last trades as well. So it's again, all about transparency, and it's all about user experience, yeah? Because usually investing, if you think about hedge funds or investment banks, they're very private, right? Uh, everything is hidden. Even if you trade yourself, you never expose trades. In Naga, it's completely transparent. So it's all, even if you perform very badly, we will show it. If you perform very well, then you will also be exposed, okay? And um, all across the board, as I said, you can invest into everything. And this is what Naga is all about. So it gives you access um, to, to specific uh, financial instruments. So if I have my trading accounts, I'm logging in now with my Bitcoin account. And you see, I see everything in Bitcoin. I can fund my, my wallets, my crypto wallets here. And I can uh, transfer money from, from my wallets to my trading account and just invest. Or I can simply withdraw, let's say, I made some money with, um, with my Bitcoin trades on Apple. I get Bitcoins back and I can withdraw them easily. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, we also offer an own, uh, own Naga card. So you have like, a, like an own um, MasterCard connected to your trading account. We can check out. So we bridge the gap. And this is the closing statement of this. Let's say, didn't want to pitch the product, but just um, underlining what we built. Um, you can get a Bitcoin. You fund the Bitcoin on our account. Um, you trade Apple stocks, you make some money. You then sell the Bitcoins via our own exchange, get euros and load your MasterCard. So you see the whole chain is being covered. And it has cost us 20 million euros and four years of learning, but that's uh, what Naga is all about. And uh, I will leave you now after my monologue to ask me some questions. So thank you for this one. So I'll stop sharing the screen now. Okay. And I need to find the chat <laughs> because the questions are on the chat, right? So I never use Yeah. Yes, it's down there. And thank you, Benjamin. Ben, it's, a, it's really a great presentation and congratulations for such a successful uh, career at, uh, at such a young age. 
it was very inspiring. Yes, the questions are there, so I'll leave you to handle them. I just need to see, where, where can I find the... the, the if, you, if you stretch uh, the screen to the top uh, on the bottom bar, you will see right in the middle uh, a chat, a little chat box. Ah, there you go. Okay, good, 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 perfect. perfect. So we can, yes, we can, okay, 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 okay. So now the question is, how does it work with what system since users receive? Ah, okay, so I will start, okay, by, by just going timeline. Um, yeah, the reward system is, uh, is it's a very good question. So yes, um, we actually pay the leaders for sharing their trades, obviously money, because they are our content creators. Um, and we charge a copy fee for the copiers. So we charge per trade a fixed fee, it's around 50 cents. So whenever you basically copy someone, no matter how much money you invest, you pay a flat fee of 50 cents. Even if you invest a million, it's still 50 cents. And then we share with the, with the content provider, uh, which is the, the leaders. Because the leaders, in our case, are, are really the Instagrammers, yeah, who are uploading the photos and uploading the, you know, the food pictures, whatever. In our case, it's like creating the traits that other people can make money with. So for this one, we charge fee. Considering this uh, copy feature with eToro. Yes, eToro is our main competitor. So when I started in 2015, I thought, wow, eToro, you know, um, amazing. I mean. Uh, eight years old already back then and uh, you know such a great concept but my mission is obviously to to over overcome it or now we had our struggles whatsoever but we are growing very fast and we are also we we became faster profitable than eToro and we're innovating more than them maybe somebody will watch from eToro this, this video so they can see what we're on to um, regarding top trader, how much is earned from strictly trading, how much is from copy. Everything that you see on the top traders in the, in the transparent view is based on the self-trading. So every statistic that is copying, we don't consider because copying is not your own skill, right? I mean, obviously, if you, if you cherry pick the best leaders, it's a great skill, but um, we do not consider the copy profits as own profits. So the statistics are all based on self-trading. How is the corona, coronavirus uh, affecting the company? Um, that's a good question. So look, I am I'm a very, let's say, strict person when it comes to, to people management and performance. So I think this is my biggest issue that I don't have my people in, 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 in the rooms and in the house. So I cannot, I cannot go and push. Um, and this is affecting me. Economically, no. I mean, people trade a lot and we are definitely the winners of the crisis. Uh, when you do financial trading and brokerage because you know people are staying at home and what do you read on the news number one it's the health issues and the bad stories about people suffering and the other thing is the stock market crashing and a lot of people are losing and making money so uh, economically wise it's a it's a great uh, like like era for us even if it sounds yeah strange because a lot of people suffer so i would of course like to avoid that um, but as a business owner and, the, and running the business, it's kind of hard to keep up the momentum with your team in these phases because they're not there and people need sometimes a good push face to face. Um, I understand you overcame your game over period by focusing on your real goal and restructuring. Can you talk more about it? Like what in fact was your main goal? Yes, look, um, I, I love products, yeah? I love technology. Um, I like ideas, as you've seen maybe from my story, we were 15 years old selling MP3 players. I was definitely already a bit strange to everyone else um, because, you know, with 15 you do other things than, than selling online. Um, but what I, what, I, what I did well back then, when I was young, I knew I wanted to make money, okay? And with Naga and where the game over moment came, it was like reflecting, why did we actually start this? On the one hand side, you can have a mission, you can have a vision, right? Absolutely. And your responsibility grows, especially because we were listed and we have public shareholders. The pressure was crazy, I tell you, because people invested money and they lost money. Uh, virtually, some of them realized the losses and they're angry with you. And for me, it was looking at what I have and not where I want to go anymore. So I, I was just taking a step back and said like, Come on, you build everything, everything is there, but it's not structured in the right way. So we basically, you know, we had a, like, a, like a toolbox of different products, like a toolbox of ideas. We scrapped half of it. We also challenged everything we had. We challenged every employee, we challenged every setup, and we cut 
we hired, rehired, whatever. So this was one thing with the goal to make this company profitable. I was not about, again, speed and innovation in that term. I was like, okay, enough. I was overpacing because if you make an IPO after two years, you're definitely overpaced. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't do it again after this time. Um, but you reflect that you have to focus on something else, which is in the business, of course, earning money. Because if you earn, then you don't have so much, let's say, areas that people can target you on. Okay, they cannot attack you. You can say, okay, I'm doing something, but it works, right? I make money. So, but you can, you lose this kind of confidence if you say, I build this, 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 and that, and then somebody comes, but you don't make money. So my focus was to make money. Yeah. Um, good question afterwards. What was your rationale for such an early IPO? Uh, look, I think it was, it was the, the, the idea, or, or the, the concept for us was, we want to be already through everything when we grow, okay? Because sometimes when you prepare an IPO, let's look at Uber or Airbnb now. You know, they're massive. I mean, massive scale, massive investors, but preparing an IPO, you basically stop a bit the operations. The CEO is only pitching out there and he's trying to get the funds in. Our idea was, okay, let's build a product, let's raise funds, let's have an IPO ready or ipo company structured, and then when we grow the whole upside, we will feel it in our stock price, but also the downside, and I felt the downside a lot. Yeah? This year we are 140% up with the stock, so it's great, and people are happier, and confidence is building. Um, so the rationale was to be transparent, structured, ready to raise more money on the capital markets because it's again all about, it's not, it sounds cool to be IPO. Yeah. I, also, I also felt like, oh, I have a public listed company. But in the end, the reasoning behind it is to raise money and to do it in a good way when you grow. And because you have to report every six months or every three months, depends where you list it, in what segment, um, you have to deliver, you have to show if it goes well and if it goes not so well. So this was kind of the rationale. How would you describe Naga strategy in one sentence? Wow. Um, in one sentence, I would say in the beginning, it was crazy innovators, no matter what. And now it's, um, I think now it's making money by disrupting the trading industry. That's our strategy. That's, that's our, our strategy at the moment, because we know we can make money and we know we have the disruptive uh, concepts. Um, couldn't be argued that the site has too much transparency. Maybe some people do not wish to share. Is there a way to avoid it? Yes, obviously you can set yourself to private. Um, you can set yourself to hide some specific traits, but then you lose the function of being copied. So um, as I said in the beginning that um, people get earn money with us. So the best leaders, they earn 10 to $15,000 a month. So it's like driving an Uber car, right? But you share traits or uploading Instagram pics, but actually you, you trade and you get on top. Um, but for this one, you have to be transparent. If you want to hide it, no problem. But then you can have the upside. You have done a lot of different product services and projects since founding Naga. What was your approach to product portfolio management to decide what you should work on first and what you should focus your attention and resources to? This is an extremely good question. Um, yeah, priority management and, and uh, whatever you should build is extremely important. And I can tell you there's no rule. Um, there's really no rule. I mean, I, I had the feeling sometimes I was listening, not enough to my customers, but when I started listening, they prioritized what you would do. And this is the best thing. It's really the best thing because customers, they want to use your product. They're there because they saw a nice banner, somebody called them, somebody pitched them, and then they say, now what? So you don't go to McDonald's yeah, to eat sushi, right? <laughs> so if they, maybe you can make a suggestion that they make a sushi burger, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense because a lot of people said that. Um, so here you go with the flow of the customers. And in the beginning, uh, when, we, when we started to do it, it was more about looking where the competitors were bad or where it was too complicated. And then you build step by step your product portfolio and see what do you want to improve. And then ideas come up. And if you have a technology team, and we have a great one with, um, with uh, the guys in Bosnia, they also come up with ideas. So you have like organic ideas, internal source, and the more exposure you get, you just have to grab the customer feedback and they will prioritize your work. 
congrats, thanks for the presentation, thanks a lot. <laughs> um, in, th in 2018, I was pitching on Platinum, used the same trading system, early bad markets. Are you giving me background spots and comments? You know, spots? Yes, it's so funny because this, for example, now, guys, is a great example from Alberto um, of customer feedback. And I can tell you on our Naga feed, they tag me and they also ask me, will you go into sports betting? We want to maybe make a social network for spots betting where people automatically copy spots bets. Yes, absolutely. This is something we can leverage into and uh, we could pivot into. However, two years ago, I would do it. Now, if I'm a specific amount of cash that I can put aside, let's say I can take 20% of my net profits, I will use the budget stress-free to innovate, to build and grow. And there should be also an R&D budget. And I'll feel much, much more comfortable using money that I earned because no one will attack me and no one will put pressure on me. And this could be potentially something that we will do. What we will do have, uh, more now this year will be something around the payments, which I will release. Um, what is the company point of difference against other brokers providing copy trading service? For example, Toro. Look, um, if we talk about copy trading and the platform, you have a lot of assets. You have the whole social character, the social enhanced system, so you can you can get the news, you can connect, you can benefit, and the copy service, our copy service is copy as you go. It means that you can set it up per trade and not per leader. It's very important. So in eToro or other copy systems, it's actually like a soft asset management, right? You have 5K, you give them 5K, they manage it. In our case, it's like you have 5K, you spread these 5Ks, uh, 5K uh, amongst 10 leaders and based on a single trade they do. Some of the trades get skipped because you're busy with someone else. So you basically naturally diversify. And um, this is what AutoCopy is about in our system. And obviously the user experience, the UI, the fact that we have integrated crypto wallet, integrated crypto exchange, integrated IBAN service with an own MasterCard that you can use and check out um, this all in one platform. No other platform has it, no one, not even eToro. eToro has eToro X outside platform. They, had, they want to launch a card outside the platform. Um, their UI didn't change in two years. It's always the same and I wouldn't use it, but it's okay. But I tried to use it and uh, it's not my, not my work. What exactly is Naga monetization model if the transaction fees per trade are 0% uh, or you assume the market cryptocurrencies? So look, um, this is the question from Timo um, at 520. Um, the monetization model are commissions and fees because we, we have CFDs in Forex where we charge commissions. However, we have real stocks and real stocks, in our case, you own the stock, we have it commission free. This is part of our, let's say, offering where we say we want people to, it's more democratizing um, the, the whole financial space to say you should be able to invest commission free and we pay for it, very simple. Um, we pay for it as a service. We pay for it that you feel comfortable with the platform. If you want to diversify and suddenly trade oil or gold, you can do it. There yeah, you have to pay. Um, but other than this, on real stocks, if you really want to buy Apple shares, Facebook, or even our share, we also offer it on our own platform. You don't pay any commission. We are connected to eight exchanges and 417 stock titles. So it's quite a massive range and much better than many other platforms. Um, and um, yeah, and there's also a question about Naga coin to measure the volatility. Look, the Naga coin um, got fully under um, in the crypto crash, but our mission now, after we turned the company around, Naga as a company, we still have the Naga coin project, we will put our focus now on the coin as well. So we will definitely do something there. Um, how do you differentiate yourself from solutions like Revolut? Look, Naga is more, I would say, a more a holistic solution, okay? Revolut is, is a banking card with some options of investing. Um, however, Naga has a lot of standalone projects. I mean, even our portfolio management could be an own startup. Our robot advisor could be an own startup. The card app could be an own startup. The copy trading could be an own service. Um, um, or the social feed, which is self-learning and is even connected with Thomson Reuters Newsfeed. These are all services, uh, all in one. Okay, So that's why a lot of people who joined us, they didn't understand what's Naga actually. But it's like, a, I call it ecosystem. But my head of brand said she, she sees it more as a new financial system. So it's a system to invest your money, um, to go after it, but all in one account. And, um, and if you want to do personal finance, use the Naga card, I know the item, Wirecash. 
If you want to, I don't know, um, copy some strategies, you use Naga Auto. If you want to read about financial news without going to Bloomberg from some others, you just stay in a Naga feed, you know? If you want to own a Bitcoin, you buy the Naga, uh, you buy the Bitcoin and crypto wallet. So this is the big differentiator, you know? So it's all in one. Um, how do you come up with the idea to create Angelplatz? <laughs> it's a very, very funny story because I was swimming. As I said, I was in the national team swimming. I didn't have a lot of money, but I had a nice hobby, which was fishing when I was young. And during my travels all around the globe, because we were training in, in Australia, we were training in Japan, etc. So I was uh, buying um, fishing equipment abroad, and I always bought two items because they were cheaper than in, in Germany. And I sold one of the items to refinance the one that I bought. So if I had a lure that I bought for 20 euros, I bought uh, two of them for 10. I kept one and the other one I sold it for 20, so I get it back with profit. And this is how it started actually when I stopped swimming, I had a lot of time and a lot of ambitions and because I wanted always to, you know, transform my power from the sports into business. And uh, yeah, this was, I had the background from e-commerce. I knew how to sell online. So I was buying abroad, importing and selling in the German speaking area. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but eToro gained a lot of users through its strong advertising. Absolutely. I mean, eToro is all over the place. Everyone knows eToro. Um, I admire them for that. Um, obviously, they raised $300 million. They are 12, 13 years old. So their popularity came in the last two years, like really, really hard. Um, I do not follow the strategy of hardcore uh, pull um, because it's very expensive. If you have the pockets, you can have the pockets, but the pressure is on. It's not because I'm not confident, but I think you can do it in a different way. I think that in case of Naga, we will go the Uber and Airbnb concept. So we are building this platform now from, we understand what the retail clients want, but we also understand what the, what the providers want that are running their networks, they're running their groups, they're running their Instagram pages about trading. And we are more and more selling Naga as a tool for them. So if you, if some of you guys wants to start a trading school, um, then come to Naga, create your own page, share all of the content on our feed, let your people join the Naga uh, platform, and then you engage with them in the platform. And if they want to trade what you traded, just simply copy you. Or if they want to directly trade, uh, execute a trade because you made a post about gold, they directly trade. They don't have to jump from Instagram to, um, to a video, zoom, and then open their trading app. They can use Naga, it's like an, an, an Facebook for or LinkedIn for stock trading and investing. This is, um, this is where we're going. And I think to focus more on these growth catalysts, sometimes you have one educator, he has 1,000 clients. So I don't have to buy 1,000 clients and, and serve them. I have only one educator who has his own community and uses Naga as a tool. I think it's a much better strategy than doing a hardcore pool marketing with tens of millions a month. Mm. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear with my question earlier regarding top traders. My point, how much was of that is organically earned from a user's trading choices and how much is earned from the... Ah, okay. So if you looked at the statistics, um, the copy bonuses are not included in statistics. So whatever they earn, they earn it with, with their own money. And whatever they get from the bonuses is not being included at all in the, in the statistics. How much is cybersecurity important for your company? Very much now, because when you're growing and when you get dangerous to your competitors, um, a lot of people trying something. It's not, not from the movies, but you suddenly have um, brute force, hardcore attacks, you know, uh, DDoS attacks um, on your servers, people trying to steal your clients. Um, you have to be on top of the game, so you have to invest in your security uh, and, and we do it. So, uh, especially because we, we learned a lot of crypto as well, because crypto is a space full of maniacs when it comes to this one. You can lose a lot of money by not being prepared. And in our case, we always were very much about security. Um, ben, just a, just a quick question. And uh, being mindful of your time, and I'm absolutely happy to, to prolong this uh, as long as it needed. I just wanted to make sure that you have no other uh, obligations that are at this moment. or In six minutes, <laughs> actually. 5.45, so we'll have a meeting, but it's, it's okay. It's, I'm at the last two questions, so. Okay, um, thank you very much for this. We're enjoying it, so please. <laughs> no. um, so the last two questions, like how have you set up your initial tech team from the tech co-founder? Um, actually, I was using, back then I was using Upwork, you know? Um, it, it was like, I had this idea. 
I knew what it is to build technology, but I knew that I would not do it on my, by myself. Yeah? So actually, I still have the guy who I'm hired number one. A lot of people joined and left over, I think, 300 in that five years. It was crazy turnaround because it was high pace. Um, but this guy's still here. And um, then I met uh, through these, these endeavors. And when I was doing Swipey, the still profession, I was actually writing Rashad, who is a, who's a colleague of your professor, right? And uh, I wrote him, um, no, actually, sorry, he wrote me about the project, which was Swipey, and it ended up in my spam folder. And I was an opening for three months. And suddenly I had the need that somebody fixes something, but I don't know why I opened my spam folder. I mean, I believe in universe and all this energy stuff, but um, I found this email from, from Russia, from, who is the co-founder now of our tech uh, center in, in Bosnia. They're very successful now. I mean, they're 80, 100 developers, crazy talented team. And this is where we came along because they said, Guy, Ben, we wanted to start our own business in, in Bosnia. We have access to talent, we are experienced, and this is how our dream story started. And we were growing together. We were going up together, down again together. And now we're fully up. Uh, so this was this was a bit uh, a bit coincidence. But you always, usually you challenge the luck and the success. Um, why did you decide to offer so many different services instead of focusing on one and becoming the best in that? This question I asked myself as well, especially in the hard times. But now I can tell you because we have so, so much and we were so crazy about it to add everything in one platform approach i would say or amazon for investing i know I'm, I'm comparing to uber i'm comparing to facebook and linkedin because all of these concepts went into it and all of these concepts have millions and billions of users so um in the beginning i also said, said why didn't i just make a brokerage yeah but now it is the best thing that ever happened to us we have like we have a real USB now. So in the USB, the entry barrier is very high. I mean, if you want to develop all of these things, you need a lot of money, you need to make a lot of mistakes, um, you need a lot of push. And um, now I can just say, now we are focusing on our ecosystem. We are not developing anything new, but we are enhancing what we have. So this is called vertical innovation. Okay? You can innovate horizontally, you add a lot of things down the line, or you have something and you make it better and better and better. And I have like a supermarket now that I can say, I have auto copy, I make it better, I add AI. Or I have um, the leaderboard, I add more features that will help the clients to do better trading decisions or recommendation engine. Um, crypto wallet, crypto exchange services, you make it better, you have a living service or what, I mean, you, you, can, you can name it. But it doesn't change the fact that people come to Naga because they don't want to have they don't want to jump and jump and jump. And if you look at WeChat in China, this is so-called a super app. And Naga is also a super app for investing. And you will not find anything like that. Maybe it's not perfect. It will be perfect, obviously, um, because we push hard. But you will not find something similar to it. So that's, that's from my side. Yeah, thanks for the questions. And very, very nice questions, actually. Ben, it was uh, really a pleasure. I got all excited and uh, uh, Reshad was my student uh, in my past life when I was teaching computer wow. systems architecture. <laughs> and, uh, and through them, I actually was following Naga in your path as you were, you were describing it. I think uh, everybody in this call will join me in thanking you. A uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Congratulations on your stellar success. And we're looking forward to see a lot more from you. No, thanks. thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great day and enjoy. And stay thank safe you. and healthy. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh,